Let's start with uh, why you're here today. What is it that you wanted to say in that courtroom today that you didn't get the chance to say? Well, I needed to tell the jury that there was a whole other life to Jody Ann Arias, a life where she was cherished and responsible and respected and loving and caring, and I just don't feel that that's gotten across. What would you have said to them? Well, I would have said to them that uh, I knew a girl who was, who was uh, mature beyond her years, that was an excellent worker, a good friend, a good caregiver, a good caretaker. I trusted Jody with uh, my most prized, I don't want to use the word possession, I trusted her with my son, the most important thing in my life. And I had no reason to ever doubt or ever to fear for his safety when she he was with Jody. But how would the jury reconcile that with what she has done? I watched Jody from the time that I first met her. I watched her mature and I watched her grow in the workplace, grow as an artist. And it wasn't until the spring of 2006 that this girl started to change. And I watched her change before my very eyes. What do you think happened? It was right at the time that she was getting involved with the prepaid legal program and the Mormon church. And she started to have a lack of responsibility, which is something I'd never known her to have. She started talking in um, magical thinking, we call it. Very positive thinking of wanting to attract good to you. She watched the movie The Secret. And she came away from that thinking that with just positive intention and, and goodwill that she could attract to herself and to her life everything that she wanted financially and materially. Do you think you could have changed the jury's mind if you had been allowed to speak today? I have no idea if I could change their mind. I, you know, I'm thankful that I'm not on that jury. How desperate are you for them to know this other side of Jody? It's important that they know and it's important that this change happened within Jody within, you know, a year and a half from the time that I left, you know, left her and from the time that she was accused of this crime, or convicted of this crime. Do you feel like something happened to her to change her, that this was a completely different woman than the woman you knew? I saw that change. She's unrecognizable to me now as to the Jody she used to be. She never talked like that. She never lied and had that disrespect. She was not manipulative. She was not evil. What was your relationship like when, when you were together? I mean, what, what were the things you did together? How, what, what were the things you would tell the jury that uh, would give an impression of the person she was? Do you have anecdotes? Do you have... When Jody uh, first started working with us at Ventana, I was not attracted to her uh, per se, um, other than she was an excellent, outstanding employee. Um, over the years, uh, we started to get a little closer, and uh, then I started to slowly introduce her to my son. Um, uh, she was loving and kind. She was like an auntie to my son. Uh, Jody and I got closer, and then when the time came to leave the area to follow my son and his mother, we decided to move together, and we found ourselves in Palm Desert where we could afford a house, and we couldn't afford a house where we lived before in Monterey. And you were very close, and you describe her as being loving? She was very loving. Our relationship was monogamous. Um, she was sensitive and caring. And she was wonderful with my son. She was good with her friends that were in the Big Sur and the Monterey community. We did many activities together. We hiked, we went fishing, we went camping. She would, and she would go with uh, some of the, the people who worked at Ventana um, every week to go bowling. Um, she had lots of great relationships, and she's very fondly thought of by the local community where I come from. And where are all those people? Why were they not here today to talk? Those people were all, they're all right where they were before. And I don't think there was enough of an effort to reach out and to find them, uh, to get them to come forward. Some have uh, volunteered to come forward and have not been engaged. What broke you up, the two of you? The two of us, I was, I was very close to asking Jody to marry me. I wanted to have a child with Jody, and I would have married her. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I already had a son, and I only have so many hours in a week, and I knew that if I got married again and had another child, that it would take away from the very limited time that I had with my son, and I just couldn't live with that. And so she broke up with you because of that? She wanted marriage? 
She wanted marriage only after devoting herself to the Mormon Church. Before that, we had maybe touched on marriage once or twice. She knew that I wasn't ready to get remarried again, that it was not an issue between us. After studying the Mormon Church and preparing to be baptized, she told me that she no longer wanted to be intimate, that she felt she was living in sin, and that she felt she wanted to save herself for a Mormon husband. All right, you just told me that the Jody you see now is unrecognizable to, to you. Is that the Jody that should be spared? I believe that Jody is still there. Jody needs help. I don't know what happened to her. Uh, from the time that I left our desert home in Palm Desert in December of 2006, we had very little correspondence. She was unable to pay her bills for the last several months, so I was carrying that entire load. This was unlike the girl I had known for these previous years. Very hardworking, very responsible. She had worked two jobs in, incredibly and had over $12,000 in the bank when we put down payments down on this home. She wasn't taking me for a ride because I didn't have any money. So when the jury hears all this, how Jody changed into this different person who then went on to kill Travis Alexander, how is it that you think your testimony of who she used to be was going to help her? The jury needs to know that she didn't go from one abusive relationship to another. Our relationship was not abusive, emotionally, physically, sexually, none of that. And I don't know what happened to her in that last year and a half, but something changed radically. I watched the change before my very eyes as she got more and more irresponsible, as she talked more and more magically about the riches that she would get through working the PPL, or the prepaid legal program. And then she was unable to pay her bills. And when I'd ask her for the money, she'd tell me not to talk negative to her, that we had to keep things positive. Do you pity Jody? Do you feel sorry for her? Do you think she deserves to live? I think Jody needs some help. And I think that if Jody got some help, a lot, of, I think the old Jody is still inside of her. And I think she could be a productive uh, member to society, even from behind bars. She needs help. Which was the Jody that you saw in? when she came to visit you in Monterey before, uh, uh, before she went to uh, Mesa? When I, that morning, she came and visited uh, my son and I at my home. She had breakfast with us. She seemed normal. She seemed happy. She checked her email. She borrowed the gas cans from me, which was not that far out of our realm. We took camping trips and went off in the desert before and took gas and other supplies with us. So I didn't question it. So she seemed perfectly normal then. She day. seemed perfectly normal to me. She left on an upbeat, happy note. Did you think, now in retrospect, do you think the borrowing of the gas cans was sinister? I have no idea. I didn't detect anything sinister, and I had no previous history of Jody ever being sinister, manipulative, or dishonest. So I thought nothing of it. When you were in court today, and they dismissed everyone and said there will be no mitigating testimony, were you shocked? I actually never made it into the courtroom today. I was stalled and then learned of the fact there would be no testimony later in the day. I was shocked. I was here on Thursday, ready to testify at great cost to myself as far as my work environment and missing time and not knowing when the trial would happen, not the trial, when my role in the trial would happen. And I was shocked on uh, Thursday that the afternoon was wasted with antics, and I ended up having to fly home and return for today. So if there was a legal maneuvering reason for doing this to try and spare Jody's life, would you be okay with the fact that you didn't get to testify then? I would be okay with it. I'm not a legal expert, and I don't know the maneuvers or what antics are being played or strategies are being worked at this point. This is the first time that you've come forward publicly and shown your face and talked uh, about Jody Arias. Why? My fear in my first testimony was that someone would recognize my face on the news and it would get back to my middle school 14-year-old son. And I wanted to do all that I could. I was subpoenaed to the case. I didn't have a choice to come. And they were, they granted not filming my face. But today you felt strongly enough to go ahead and show your face. Today, after all the harassment and the, uh, the accusations uh, in the media, in the internet world, in my workplace, in my hometown, 
I decided that there's nothing that I'm hiding from and that I did need to show my face and let everyone know that I was real. I did not know Travis until after hearing of the murder. I did not know that Jody was going to Mesa, Arizona. I did not know any of her plans, and it's been suggested anything from me being sympathetic to her plans to being an accomplice with her plans, and none of that is true. Do you think she's gotten a fair trial? I do not think she's gotten a fair trial. I think the trial's been polluted from the start, partly because she spoke to the media before ever leaving Wairika, California. However, I've got strong opinions on the way that the county of Maricopa has proceeded, and I think that uh, the appeal process will be telling. Do you still care for Jody Arias? I care very much for Jody Arias. It's been said that I'm still in love with Jody Arias, and that's why I'm here. I'm not still in love with Jody Arias, but I have love for her, and I hold her dear to my heart. True love never dies. We all know that. I love my son's mother, although I'm not in love with her anymore. Do you, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but do you blame yourself at all for the breakup and how her life spiraled out of control, or appears to have? I think I have some guilt, possibly misplaced, that she was in the desert and living with me and left that situation. And of course, I had to leave the situation and come back to the Monterey area to be with my son. So I feel a little guilty about it. At the same time, Jody's an adult, and she was a very responsible, conscientious adult. And so I can't, I can't feel too much guilt there. But in terms of how can you defend this monster, have you heard criticism cannot, for that or been harassed for that? I have heard those comments. And the fact is, is that no one can condone this heinous, heinous crime. I can't condone it, and I don't know how. It's been the biggest shock of my life. My family all knew Jody. Jody interacted with my family. In essence, she was a member of our family. And yet you don't think she should die for that? I don't believe in state killing. I don't believe that two wrongs make a right. Jody needs help. She should not be let back out into society. I believe that, I don't know, it's not up to me to give her punishment.